everybody, it is Phil here from the Rope Break Podcast, and sadly I am not joined by Johnny, as he is currently nursing a hangover. Uh, he went to Bristol City, and that's his own fault. But I am joined by one hell of a lovely guest. He's the one and only Mr. Tom Campbell. Oh, hi! Hello! I, I, I wonder whether Johnny's not here, because <laughs> he, still owes, he still owes me a fiver. <gasps> Dun dun dun! <laughs> he, do- he doesn't really. He doesn't oh. really. He, he, I, I get the I get the vibe. He's genuinely excited about um, about Sunderland going to Wembley. I mean, probably paying too much for for beer. Quite <laughs> frankly, I mean, I've been down there with South Shields, so oh, yeah, that's it's, uh... it's it's madness. I mean, I don't want to dampen the spirits of, of Sunderland fans off to Wembley, but. Honestly, you're gonna have to remortgage for a pint. <laughs> yeah, London prices in it. It is just ridiculous. And it's... don't make conversation on the tube. It's not like the time of metro where you can have a nice chat about things and go, "Oh, can I sit in the can I sit in the front seat?" It's like they don't they don't play those games on yeah, the tube. They're it's funny. It, it's just not a good idea. No, 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 no. So, Mr. Tom Campbell, Hi. thank you so much for coming in. It is an stars. honor, and it is indeed a privilege. Oh, you, 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 bloody lovely gentleman. Uh, I will see you this before before I start anything. Say whatever you like. Bottoms. <laughs> you Ooh. can you can f word as much as you like. I'm gonna say it right now. Fuck. <laughs> Do you know what? Genuinely, I I don't swear that often. I know. And this is and and this comes up a lot. A lot of people go, you don't swear very. And because I believe that swear words are powerful mm-hmm. because we don't use them very often. So I if I find other ways to to put to convey my anger it means i keep the swear words in my locker mm-hmm. so when i call someone a cunt <laughs> right yeah that's okay, the reaction yeah. we get okay yeah. people, and right now people listening would have gone oh my god <laughs> the sky is falling we now live in the upside down tom did a swear <laughs> tom did a sweary thing uh that's the name of the next north pit view now <laughs> <laughs> bowers book it <laughs> tom did a sweary tom did a swear <laughs> NCL 202. So we all know you from, obviously, well, wrestling fans will know you as the announcer now for North, yeah. the commentator for main event wrestling. And for North. And and for North. And for Rise and for in Leeds. And for 3CW. <laughs> and for 3 Count Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically a, a bad smell that just <laughs> is turning up. At, it's the, the funniest part was, uh, and we can get into it, I did a little bit for Defiant mm-hmm. um, last October in Sheffield. Mm-hmm. It was, and I could tell you the story how, how it all came to be, but I popped up on the pay-per-view, mm-hmm. and <laughs> within a second, you know, you'll, you'll get some wrestlers who'll come on here, and they'll give you the, they'll give you the big I am, oh, I had a thousand messages when this happened. I had one, <laughs> and it was someone going, is there a Northeast wrestling show that Tom Campbell isn't on? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like somebody I, somebody I wasn't interacting with on Twitter at the time I'd never met before but they were like it's that like that scene from Father Ted <laughs> that gobshite again <laughs> is he never off the air <laughs> yeah it's pretty much that you are everywhere so I've got to ask how did you get, even get started doing any of this ridiculous uh, well um, I moved up to the northeast um, back in 2000 and oh gosh 15 mm. um Moved up for work, didn't know anybody, uh, but I thought, you know what? Hey, let's let's do it. I've been off the job here. Let's go for it. Let's have some fun. Yeah. But I did a little bit of wrestling stuff back from where I'm from. I'm originally from Worcester, mm-hmm. from the West Midlands, and I used to live in Shrewsbury. We used to work. I used to work at a, a wrestling company in Shrewsbury, and it was the it was the crazy times. It was uh, me and a bunch of mates. I was late to the party, but they kind of went. A group of mates went. If we were football fans, we'd have a five-a-side footy game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're wrestling fans, so let's put on a wrestling show. Right. <laughs> and uh, there was ra- varying levels of trainedness, but mm. it was always a good, fun show, and it always got a good crowd. And they brought me in to be the ring announcer, and then I was the commissioner. <laughs> and um, one of my one of the, my favorite things I now tell people is we had a show in Shrewsbury at the Hive, which is an arts venue, mm-hmm. about hundred people there, and it was us lot all in the show. Uh, booked in big matches and we'd had two lads turn up to say oh we're looking for a bit of experience can we do something we put them on the undercard Pete and Damien Dunn <laughs> <laughs> wow it's like just cash oh it's Pete Dunn this future WWE United Kingdom champion <laughs> longest Dunn. longest reigning WWE champion of the modern era on, yeah, the, sure, why on not? the undercard underneath uh, basically me, us and a bunch of mates <laughs> one of the guys that ran it as well and one of my favourite sparring partners from working with EDW uh, is a guy called Liam O'Rourke, 
mm-hmm. who has since written Crazy Like a Fox, the Brian Pillman story. Oh. So he wrote the Brian Pillman book that everybody talks about, and he's genuinely one of the best talkers in wrestling. <laughs> and I think everybody now knows him for writing this book, and I would, I, I'm, I'm so sad that not enough people know he's actually a good wrestler and an incredible mouthpiece. Mm-hmm. I, I'm ge- like genuinely some of the stuff that we did when I was still getting into it. Like I, I love it if the time came around again that me and Liam would work together again because I think I've had I, I was still quite new to it and I think I've learned quite a bit, especially the last few years. I'd love another go around with Liam. I really would. Uh, but and there's but it was so that was what I did that and then I kind of came away from it. Um, I had a lot of problems with my throat, hmm. um, which meant that I I dropped back a lot of outside stuff that i did and and i end up having like um op- i had my tonsils out at 30 which is unheard of because they always go we don't normally do it yeah after you're like 10 mm. but it was like i i nearly died because they got they, yeah i nearly died because of my ton- my throat nearly killed me Bloody hell. which is amazing um <laughs> it's amazing now but not when you're being told by the doctor we need to send you to a and e now because your tonsils are swollen up to the st- stage where uh, you've got quinsy, which basically means you'll either they'll either explode and you'll the poison will kill you, or they will enlarge to the point where they block your airwaves and you'll choke to death. So we need to send you to A and E now. They need to change the name for that. <laughs> Qu- quinsy sounds like some sort of magical fairy <laughs> or a detective series. From yeah. The 80s. <laughs> so because that's the you know what? I I, I want to keep a little jar. So every time I mention quinsy, somebody puts a penny in the jar. <laughs> I could make a fortune. Um, <laughs> But I came away from a lot of wrestling stuff, and then my throat got better. I ended up um, moving away and moving to the northeast, and I got in touch with, I believe, the first contacts I had in wrestling up here was Drew Shardlow and and Howard Drake. Oh, they were the first people because they'd reached out to me uh, to to help promote an event, and I'd said, "Do you, do you need a ring announcer? Because I'm I've done it before." And they're mm. like. Actually, yeah, we do. Come and do it. Mm. And I was like, I was just like, I was just wanted to, to get my head in there. Mm. And this was for Absolute Wrestling. Oh yeah, I remember them. Yeah, it's it's the company that keeps they keep teasing. Oh, they might come back at some point. It's a bit like basically, I think when Absolute Wrestling comes back, Half Life Three will come out. <laughs> they just keep cock teasing people just, as a yeah, problem. Yeah, so. absolutely. But they were. But I I owe it to them because they were the ones that first gave me a platform to be a ring announcer. Mm. So I did one show for them. And at the end of it, it was Drew, my mate Drew, that came up and went, can we give you some dates for the rest of the year? I was like, yeah, why not? Why not? I'm very lucky in the sense that a lot of the times when things like this have fallen into my lap, I've kind of come in and done it, mm-hmm. just initially on a one-off. Mm-hmm. And then the promoters come to me afterwards and saying, can we give you some dates for the rest of the year? <laughs> like, okay, I must have done something right. Yeah. And so, so, that was, so I was doing work for Absolute, and it was there that I met Andrew Bowers, uh, who runs North. And I was just doing Absolute for a while. And I think then me and Andrew, we spoke. Well, Andrew approached me about doing commentary. So have you had much experience doing commentary? Mm. And and I I had I have experience and I had previous at that point of doing one wrestling match. <laughs> now, anybody who is has any overly geeky historical reference of wrestling in the mid noughties will know a match called the Biggin in Wigan. I remember you talking about this. <laughs> yeah, if I... you don't, don't worry. <laughs> Cuz um in in back in 05, I mean, we are bouncing timelines a That's bit. Fine. I do apologize. Um but back in 05 this match turned up on um a message board that I was a member of. Um Extreme Warfare Battleground for EWR players. Right. Which is like a fantasy booking game. That's okay. we'll get, I, I can't go on another tangent. Um <laughs> And um, we, and, and this video turned up, and it was uh, Chris Brawls versus Cage Tyler. It was like the worst match you've ever seen. It was diabolical. And just for bants, just to get a pop from the people on this message board, I got my little Windows microphone during my free period at college, and I did like over the top commentary for it. Oh, like like bigged up everything, made it, and and it literally that was where the line the big and in Wigan came from. It was like a throwaway line I chucked in, and then it just suddenly went lots of places this is sort of Mm pre-youtube so it's like this was before things went viral yeah it kind of went viral (laughs) and what's amazing is after i moved up here um so and once i'd worked for absolute and once i'd agreed to do commentary for north i was put with matthew gregg 
mm-hmm. from Off of Botchamania. Off of Botchamanias, yeah. And so when the first time me and Matthew sat down to do commentary for North, mm. and Matthew said, and I'm going to do my impression, because <laughs> he loves it. So, um, have you had any experience doing commentary before, like? <laughs> Can I just every, say that's almost far? Gets worse every time. <laughs> and uh, and I said, yeah, I did. Uh, I said I did a joke match. I recorded a joke match between Chris Sprouls and Cage Tyler years ago. And he went without blinking. Oh my god, big on in Wigan! <laughs> <laughs> and all night then, every softly as we recorded, we'd stop recording. Go. I can't even believe you're the one that did Biggin and Wigan. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, I, for me, to get a pop out of him. And, mm. and, for, and for, for many years, that was the height of, of, of the... That was, that was the best thing that came out of Biggin and Wigan, was popping <laughs> uh, Botchamania's own and my friend Matthew Gregg. <laughs> um, it wasn't until I'd turned up at Defiant where Jimmy Havoc came up. <laughs> I need to shake your hand, mate. <laughs> I need to fucking need to shake your hand, mate. Biggin and fucking Biggin and Wigan. I watch that every couple of weeks. Best <laughs> fucking thing I've seen. <laughs> and I, and I think it was the end of a it was the end of the Defiant show in October that I'm sat in the Premier Inn with Jimmy Havoc and Dave Bradshaw. Right. And Dave Bradshaw, who's an excellent commentator. Yes. Um, I, I'm a big fan of what Dave mm. Bradshaw does. And um, Dave didn't see, didn't know what the Biggin and Wigan was. <laughs> so I'm watching Jimmy Havoc show Dave Bradshaw the Biggin and Wigan. <laughs> and in 2019 and it's almost like I want to write a letter to myself in 2005 going Tom mate you have no idea where this is going to lead <laughs> <laughs> spoiler it's a premiere in with Jimmy Havoc and Dave Bradshaw <laughs> um, so so then I, so I started doing commentary for North and once I did that and I, I'm a pretty I think I'm a pretty good self publicist mm. like I, I'm and I always say this to people like any like the most important thing you can do is have a good social media game. Yeah. That is the most important thing you can have. You can be okay at everything else, mm-hmm. but if you can sell yourself then you're then you're on to a winner. You're in it, yeah. So um so I started putting bits on from North that I did and then I got approached by Dan at MEW, mm. uh Mike Groom uh from Three Count Wrestling mm. and uh, uh Dan, Danny Danny Old Doggy. <laughs> Old Doggy's in town. <laughs> Danny Old Doggy. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. Who uh, who who does rise? And so the the long so so now I'm at a point where I'm uh, I'm I'm comment- commentating for North, commentating for MEW, commentating for Three Count Wrestling, commentating for Rise, and the the co- the ring announcer bit for North is the new bit. Yeah, that's the that's the new and exciting thing. That's that was something that we only sort of signed the deal on in January, mm. and um, that's that's cool. Because when I moved up here, I was a fan of North Wrestling. Yeah. And and I genuinely, like, I was a guy that would buy a ticket to go oh, yeah. and watch North because yeah. I love I love the product. Mm. So to to now be kind of referred to as, like, as the, as the voice of North? Yeah, you are. You absolutely are. Wow. Blows my mind. Like, it's... it's absolutely blows my mind. It's things that I think of when I think of North is the Riverside, uh, Stone Cold Myers... Oh yes, uh, <laughs> Bowers McMahon and Tom Campbell. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I just, I genuinely very, very humble by how much like the wrestling world in the Northeast is mm. is has taken me in. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is. It's just. It's. It's just vastly, especially because you you haven't been here in in the the really down years, in which two thousand eight, two thousand nine ish, it started to die off. And it's it it's this is the best Northeast wrestling's ever been. I think I've uh, and you and and Dan said this in your show last week. Mm-hmm. Like this has been a bit of a, like a renaissance mm-hmm. for for wrestling in the Northeast. I feel like I've I've jumped on the bandwagon at exactly the right time. <laughs> yeah. Because now like there is so much phenomenal talent coming out of the Northeast. And do you not get? You must get this. You must Go get on. this wonderful glow of pride. When you watch something like NXT UK, mm-hmm. and there's Jamie Ahmed, there's there's Jay. Uh, there's Jay, you know, there's Amir Jordan, mm-hmm. like oh wow, yeah. like there's nothing that like for me, it's great to see good things happening to good people. Mm-hmm. It does, yeah. It's uh, I had that experience when I went down to uh, WrestleGate mm-hmm. down south and speaking to the promoter Gary Ward, and just to say, just to tell him, listen, the amount of talent that's in the Northeast, there's there's tons that that's there that is almost not un, unknown but just needs that extra push out the door and that that's it they're gonna explode um one of them i told him was rory kyle oh absolutely and he then 
he, what I didn't know is that he'd already booked Rory Coyle for that show and didn't tell anyone. <laughs> and if you want anybody to turn up as a surprise, it's yeah. Rory Coyle. Yeah. No, like genuinely one of my, and, and I, I say this because we've become, we've, I'm, I'm blessed in the fact that like, I feel like I'm talking about mates. Yeah. And uh, But with Rory, the, the, the best thing I can say and 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 he knows I'm not pulling his pulling his tail, and he knows I'm being honest. Jake Roberts esque. Yes, that's the greatest compliment I can pay mm-hmm. Rory Coyle because he he has that modern element of a Jake the Snake Roberts, mm-hmm. and the issue that I think Rory will have is he is so good mm-hmm. that people fall in love with him. Yeah, he is so good mm-hmm. that you. You you love to hate him, mm-hmm. but that makes you love him more. North is an amazing example of that. Yeah, Rory Coyle is fundamentally an absolute bastard. Yeah, absolute bastard. <laughs> but it is something. There is something about the North faithful where they've gone. But we love that. Yeah. Like we're not getting we're not getting any kind of bullshit from mm-hmm. that. We're getting the truth, mm-hmm. which is why I like. I think Rory and uh, Adam Foster, Shreddy Breck, yeah, are just them. They're made to be arch rivals. Yes, because they're they're it, on paper. If this was if this was the eighties and we were in in a territory in America, yeah, it'd be obvious. It would be there's Shreddy. Look at him. Whoa, muscles in places people don't have places. Mm-hmm. Living, breathing Hasbro action figure. Yeah. Rory Core, sort of scraggly, like. A weird, creepy dude. Mm. It should be the ultimate fight of good versus evil. But in 2019, it feels like Rory is the good guy. It's and it's very Adam's much the bad guy. Yeah, it is for for me. It's mankind versus the Rock. Yes, it's that that kind of vibe. Yes, and it's it's everybody's going for mankind because we know he's creepy, but we don't care. At least he's truthful and he's never lied to us. It's a bit Jake Roberts, Rick Rude as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A bit Jake Roberts, Rick Rude, and I, and I love them both for it. And yeah. When we're talking about wrestlers that we love in the Northeast, um, I, I have to give special love um, to 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 my boy Mickey the Dragon. Oh yeah, have to give love to my boy Mickey the Dragon. When I lived back, when I lived down south, um, uh, Drake and Dragon was a tag team I was very aware of. Yes, and um, I, I I particularly was a fan. I I I loved I love Howard. Me and Howard are mates, but I was particularly drawn to Mickey the Dragon's work. Mm-hmm. So. To be presented an opportunity to come and come into MEW, not only do the commentary, but actually get to work a bit closer with Mickey the Dragon, mm-hmm. I'm dead excited. So, what is it about about his style then? Is it just like that type of hard striking style and it's, high flying? I ca- it's it's a kind of it's a hybrid Geordie strong style kung fu type affair mm-hmm. that that I I think is very distinctive to everything else that's around. There's obviously a, a, an element and an increment of sort of that hard faced northeast. Uh, smash and grab but there is a there's a lot of other influences in there Mm -hmm. you know he's not long back from hong kong where i assume he's been learning more Mm -hmm. so i'm and i'm excited to to work with him more because he's he knows what he's doing in the ring but he just needs a little bit of of guidance Mm -hmm. that's why uh if you follow mew you'll know that i'm i'm now the active manager (laughs) of mickey the dragon you certainly are and uh and and our first and our first opponent is uh well our our his first opponent is is shreddy breck yes as revealed last week on the podcast at mew in his Free long vent in March twenty second. <laughs> just gonna put that out there. I mean, just saying, it's not a promotion. Not right? a promotion. <laughs> d- there we go. I've, t- I've ticked that box. We can talk about other stuff. <laughs> there we go. Um, so we've talked about like your origins and commentating and announcing. Is there any point where you just went, I could probably be a wrestler. I could train. Absolutely not. No. I, uh, <laughs> it's funny because everyone's gone. You could be a wrestler because you're quite a stocky guy. I have no interest in being a wrestler. No? I have absolutely no interest in being a wrestler at all. I think what the guys do is phenomenal. Mm. I'm, I, I, it is a craft, mm. and there is a skill to it. And, and I don't take any of that lightly. I think a lot of people go, I want to be a wrestler because I've got... I'd like the, the main conversation I have with people that want to be wrestlers, mm. who aren't, it starts with, I'd love to be a wrestler. I've got my theme music, and my finisher would be called... <laughs> <laughs> that's every conversation that's every conversation and it's fine to joke about that mm-hmm. FYI I'd be a wrestling postman called First Class Mail <laughs> the finisher would be called Stamp Duty <laughs> um, 
uh, and and but then but that's that's a, I'd never take that anywhere. Yeah. Uh, but if if a proper wrestler wants it, then go for it. But then but then what a lot of people do is they say stuff like that and they don't do any more with it. They just they I know people that have gone to like half an hour's worth of training and gone oh no and then it's not for you. Yeah, that's fine. And 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 for me, it's not for me. I'm I'm happy to let. I, I'm happy to be a part of it, and mm-hmm. and my gift is my mouth mm-hmm. <laughs> in wrestling. Is I'm if if they're gonna they do the hard work. They're the ones that put together these these incredible spectacles, mm-hmm. and my job is to make sure that the crowd truly the crowd watching or the audience watching at home truly appreciates everything they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like I'm I'm excited. I I always put the message out there when I'm when I'm doing commentary. I'll always message people and say anything, any moves. Have you got any moves that are new? Mm-hmm. Any moves that you want to really get across? Anything with a new name? Because my job is to make sure that you'll you'll do everything in the ring. But my job is to make sure that you look a million dollars. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about you, like mm-hmm. I, my job is to make you look incredible. My mm-hmm. job's not there t- for me. My job is there to go. This is why this is the best match you'll ever see. This is why this guy is is going to be number one. This this is why this. And I love that part of it. That's what I bring to it. I certainly. I, I respect their craft too much to even attempt it. Mm. So obviously you were talking there about your commentary style. Like, uh, wh- where do you get your commentary style from then? Because obviously you would have, you'd, you'd have watched wrestling for so many years. Where do you? Where is your favorite commentator from, and where does it influence you? Um, well, it's it's no secret, and and we're not here to talk about it. But there's no secret that I'm I'm, I'm a radio presenter as well. Mm-hmm. So I've done a lot of radio presenting here in the northeast and around the country. So I think I mean. I'm I'm you I'm used to talking mm-hmm. like as a lit for a living. It's just a case of shifting it in my brain a little bit. In terms of commentators that I love, I'm a massive fan of Paul Heyman. Yes, who um, as both a, a manager and as a commentator, because Paul Heyman's got this incredible ability to be able to to grab your attention with what he says and tell you a story mm-hmm. and take you on a journey. Yeah, and and I and and Paul Heyman kind of speaks in sound bites. Mm-hmm. And and in a, in an era like this, mm. that's what people need mm-hmm. because attention spans are shorter than ever. Yeah. So like, and and in my head, I know for a fact that um, when I do commentary for a show, I need to make sure that I've put stuff in there that people that that people who make a best of a package for Facebook or whatever can have little commentary sound bites little one liners yeah. so a big part of what I do is preparing that and Paul Heyman was always amazing at that mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of James R. Kennedy yes um, I've already mentioned Dave Bradshaw I love mm-hmm. but James R. Kennedy who who um, who crossed over from uh, being a manager to being a commentator mm-hmm. with ease and yeah. took all those skills with him and didn't make it about himself mm-hmm. Uh, I've heard commentators before that do that, that make mm. it about themselves. Yeah. And that's not why you are there. You mm. are there to make everybody else look incredible. Yeah. And James R. Kennedy on Defiant, I think, is excellent at doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Um, Joey Styles was always uh, is always a bit of a, a, a model for me because he's the one... He, he like. I mean, we we use it as a verb because mm. when I've done commentary on my own, mm. I'm Joey Stylesing it. Yeah, like to 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 be a to be a commentator of such an ilk that you become a verb. <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's pretty good. And he was always um, like, when you listen to ECW commentary, you when it was just Joey Styles, you didn't necessarily notice that there wasn't two voices because mm. Joey could do it on his own mm. and get everything across that needed to get across. Mm-hmm. And you weren't like, oh, I, I miss having two voices or 27. I don't know how many they've got on Raw these days. <laughs> like a commentary table full of people. Oh, God. So I'd say, I mean, and and, and a shame, and sadly, like there are lots of commentators on those tables, but there are some good ones amongst it. Yeah. And I can't not talk about commentators without saying Mara Ronaldo. Yes. Oh, my days. The passion that emanates from that man mm-hmm. when he is commentating is second to none. Mm-hmm. It is unashamedly adoring of British wrestling, mm-hmm. of, of, not of, of of wrestling in general, mm-hmm. not just British wrestling, but all wrestling. Mm-hmm. It is unashamed passion. You hear too many people 
kind of clam up when they talk about stuff that they love. Mm -hmm. And he is just, and, and that's why they have the camera on him. Yeah. Because he, because his reactions are priceless. Because yeah. here is a man that is completely invested in what is going on. Mm -hmm. And his passion makes you care more. Yeah. You think of some of the big matches from NXT over the last six months that didn't have Mauro Ronaldo and Nigel McGuinness there. Yeah. And you think, imagine it without them. Mm. You can't. They they are they are quintessential to a lot of things. Like the, obviously the match is is the match like Gar off the top of my head Gargano and Champa. Yeah, that entire series. Mm -hmm. Those matches are sensational, put together by two absolute masters of the trade. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but without Mara and Allo and Nigel McGuinness, yeah, knowing when to talk, when to bring it to life, and knowing when to stop talking, mm -hmm. they master it. And I'm and I'm in awe of the work they do as well it's it's it is that point though of silence sometimes is just the best thing silence is so powerful yes. and people are almost scared um to be quiet mm -hmm. like to go like the 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 moment that that sums that up more than anything is when uh in nxt when johnny gargano and tomaso Ciampa, when they as diy they walk to the back credit appears in the corner and then and, and Maro is saying, you know, what a great night for these guys here at NXT. And then Chomper does the turn, yeah. drives Gargano's face into the wall, mm -hmm. and they say nothing. They say for the entire ten-minute destruction of mm -hmm. Johnny Gargano, they say nothing. Mm -hmm. They don't need to say anything. Yeah, they are the best in the business, and they know this is way more powerful if we just stop mm -hmm. and and that's why that's why silence is powerful because right now if we stop talking that's caught people's attention yeah straight away because immediately if you're listening on your phone by the way sorry <laughs> i bet you must have thought you got under a tunnel or something <laughs> sorry but it's true pa and silence is powerful and they mm. get it and mm. that's what makes it really exciting but yeah it's it's it, again we're, we're talking so much about commentators here and obviously you Having a fantastic commentator like yourself coming in. Stop it! <laughs> I can't accept a compliment like that. Thank you. Checks in the post. Please do more. Please do more. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, who is the, we're talking obviously about Northeast British wrestling. Uh, this is our big our big turn. There's obviously we ha we do have a lot of pride for uh, coming from here, like we were saying. We have we do have people that have went to NXT UK, and I'm so happy mm. for for them to, for to go. I am really sad at the same time. Yeah. But I'm really happy that that's, they've succeeded, and I'm 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 really glad about that. And it does. Do you not feel opens up more opportunity? This is I I I had a feeling you were going this way. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because it's uh, it's I've seen so many people now. One of my one of the people that I've seen that has been getting more and more opportunities now, and I've been wanting them to get opportunities for years. Someone I've known personally, Connor Renshaw. Absolutely, I uh, like Connor's work a lot, and he's just—he's just, uh, he's just got it, and uh, I don't know what it is, but he's got it, and it's. Look at him on the the last North Show, I believe it was, uh, with against more than hype with Zio and Benji, and I was trying to get him to corpse. Trust me, I was trying, and I was just like, Connor, Connor, love you, Connor. Love you, and he's just no, just dead staring, and I'm like, and he's just no smile, and I'm like. Oh, <laughs> what I love is in a match like that where you had more than hype, who were an incredible tag team from OTC, and we're so lucky to have them. And we hope mm -hmm. we hope they come back. When you've got them on one side of the ring, where you've got the landed gentry, mm -hmm. two of the most, um, two, two, two that cause quite a lot of vocal reaction from the North Faithful, to yeah. put it nicely, like you can't deny that. Mm -hmm. To have all that in there. And have Connor Renshaw be the the standout in the match. Mm -hmm. That speaks volumes for Connor. Yeah, it that does. says more than we could. The fact that at the end of the match, like for me as a commentator watching it, the story was Connor Renshaw. Yeah, it was. It absolutely it really was. was. And that's not me. That's not me spinning a, a stick or, or or levering an opinion. That's me as a wrestling fan watching a wrestling match mm -hmm. and going, the story here was Connor Renshaw. Yeah, who just couldn't. Who, who wouldn't get knocked down who couldn't stay down who just battered everybody mm -hmm. he's the story of this match and did it with conviction yes and did it what you say with this with this stoic face uh, which wouldn't crack no matter how many times you tried to corpse him you naughty boy <laughs> you naughty boy not playing along 
but like he didn't and 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 the fact that he is the talking point at the end of the match with that much talent in there that says it all but so you're saying that the 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 nxt um the the, the call-up process is a good thing for wrestling yes of course it is yeah. it's it's good for people that are going there but then it also opens up the opportunity for the people that have been trying to get to that next tier, to your Norths, to your MEWs, the likes of that. Absolutely. And it's it's better for everybody. And you've got trolls, people, whatever you want to say in quotation marks, by the way, that are just like, oh, well, the, the NXT UK contracts are going to ruin British professional wrestling. Listen, nah. British professional wrestling will always be fine. It's all, you, We're always going to have an undercard of talent that are just willing to step up. I mean, uh, one of the great examples of that is uh, Will Ospreay has uh, a training school, Frontline Wrestling, and he has put something in the water there. I don't care what anybody says. I have seen four of his uh, main trainees, and they put on one of the most ridiculous, amazing shows I've ever seen. Uh, Maverick Mayhew, uh, Aaron Bourne, I believe his name is. There's There's a few of them, and they're amazing, and they possibly wouldn't have had that opportunity. Exactly. If there wasn't a bit more room in the pool mm-hmm. for them exactly. to swim. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree, by the way. Mm-hmm. I was, it was the trick. I'm not going to... This is where people might have thought, well, Tom's going to disagree. I don't. I completely agree with you. Mm-hmm. I think NXT UK is an amazing idea. I think that if you begrudge somebody getting a full-time contract to do what they love for a living full-time, if you begrudge that, you really need to check, check really where who has hurt you in life mm-hmm. because that's that's what that boils down to mm-hmm. because you how on earth you can find time in your day to tweet somebody who is who has worked their ass off pete dunn who has worked up and down the country for pennies mm-hmm. and people are tweeting him saying that you've sold out no chance no. he's earned every minute every second every pound every penny that he makes mm-hmm. and now he's in a situation where he can support his family and work on the biggest platform of them all if you are the sort of person that would wake up in the morning and go do you know what I'm going to do I'm going to tweet some of these uh, British wrestlers and tell them what sellouts they are if that is on your agenda you need a new agenda because that's really tiring and maybe look at yourself a bit more maybe go for a jog maybe, maybe look deeper inside yourself maybe take up yoga maybe take up a hobby that isn't so toxic because that's what that is. That isn't you going, it's my opinion. That's you being incredibly toxic. Please do check that. And please, as I say, do find out who hurt you. Because that's fundamentally, people like that. Um, internet trolls genuinely, if you if you look at their timelines of events on their social media, uh, this is an issue that I've encountered a couple of times this week and, yeah. uh, and uh, getting more and more vocal as time goes on. People like that, they ge- they genuinely have, they've had something in their life that is that is... Uh, that has hurt them or that has knocked them back and they feel like instead of climbing up they're going to pull the universe down towards them and when you get stuff like that if you attack then they kind of win and whilst you don't want to give them the satisfaction of winning just bear that in mind with your response like a lot of people who who i've when i've been trolled in the past it's a lot of times it's people who haven't had the, the warmth and the love and the kind of upbringing and the and the, the professional respect and decorum that I've been shown mm-hmm. they've not had that mm-hmm. and I don't know why but they haven't and that's part of the reason why they get the way they do mm-hmm. and and it's a shame you know I always try and fight with kindness but it, it is usually like like you say though it's a case of where just nobody it's uh, you didn't get enough hugs in your life or yeah. something or like you had a, a kitten taken away from you or something something like that but it's I'm not. I'm not trying to generalise people, but it's. It does seem to be that that sort of a circumstance where they're just lacking something in lacking their life. Lacking empathy or a hobby. A uh, hobby uh, or uh, empathy. Get both of those, and you're doing all right. If you have a hobby, if you have hobby and an empathy, uh, then you're absolutely fine. Mm. But yeah, it's uh, like you say. The trolls are like they're a real problem. With yeah, professional wrestling. I, I've noticed. And, uh, because everybody knows how they should do it and therefore the way that they should book the people, they should book mm-hmm. the wrestlers, they should put on the shows, the way they do it is the right way to do it. Yeah, and it's, it's, and, yeah. and they won't be told otherwise. But it's always it's always sour fucking grapes is the problem. Yeah. It's always what I have found is once you do a bit digging into that timeline, I have found this actually, that they've either had a bad experience with a wrestler, mm. they tried to be a professional wrestler, or they got kicked out of being a professional wrestler. Yes. Those are those are the three main that I've found that are that are that are a big cause for this sort of thing. Um, I consider myself 
quite lucky in, in the circumstance of I am kind of a fan who has almost a bit of an insight into where well, you, things you, going. You, 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 what you have done is you, you're building your own wrestling media empire, mm-hmm. which is which is incredible. Which is no different to what you know the guys at Cultaholic have done mm-hmm. themselves. Mm-hmm. They've they've they're fans of a thing, and they are building their own empire. They've mm-hmm. built their own brand, mm-hmm. and and they haven't sat there and gone this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong do more this this is that they've gone well let's do a thing and let's do a thing our way Mm -hmm. and then we can't complain yeah exactly i mean the people that uh that do complain about the content that either we create or cultaholic create or what culture or whatever whoever you want to say if you want to complain about it and say you shouldn't do it that way why don't you just make your own content that's fine there you go just uh, i've got no problem with people creating content and do you get a lot of people then who 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 dig at what you guys have done you some people no not necessarily but people do kind of try to look down on it and say yeah. well you're just a shite version of cult like, aren't you or what culture and i'm like well no because we do different things it's, uh, yeah it also I mean, at the same time i would imagine the people doing that are annoyed that they're not doing it themselves yeah i mean it's it is it's it, the way i the way i like to think of it is uh somebody always says oh well i thought of uber before anyone else and i just didn't do it well there's your problem yeah so <laughs> You know, well, that's exactly. I the, thought the of Microsoft problem. Word for Windows. Yeah, and exactly. Someone else has done it. Like, and blah, 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 it's blah. if that's the problem, that's fine. But that's your problem, not mine. Yeah, don't take don't take that kind of. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't take that sort of shit from yeah. people. I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, if if you want to be, I, I I'm one of the most positive people on the in on the planet. You are. You're giving me a run for my money, to be fair. <laughs> and uh, well, I do try. I do try. <laughs> uh, I've got like the shaved head, like a Buddhist monk and shit. But you know, I, do, I'm do, not... you, do you sometimes just sit on the top of a hill and just contemplate existence? Yeah, I sit on the top of a hill in Sunderland and think. <laughs> I should probably not drink this kind of Fosters right now, but yeah. Because <laughs> it's half six in the morning, I yeah. should best be getting home. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Mrs. will be wanting us back soon. <laughs> oh, Mrs. will be wondering where we are, like. It's oh, <laughs> a Matthew impression. Love you, mate. Oh. <laughs> I do love I do love him. Please come in for him. the podcast, Matthew. Yes, yeah, come on in, mate. They'll have you. They'll happily have you. I, I'd, I'd quite happily have him on. I'd, I'd, I'd love to do that. Um, but yeah, so we spoke briefly there about Cultaholic. Yes. So obviously you, you do work for Cultaholic as well. So I, I, I like to call myself uh, the Cultaholic B team. <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not the main lads. I'm I'm not on the I'm I'm not one of the because because obviously Cultaholic is a uh, a wonderful collaboration. Um, I imagine that if you are here listening to this Mm -hmm. you are aware of cultaholic yeah um so it's a wonderful selection of lads who do youtube channel and um oh gosh when was it nearly a year ago Mm. must be nearly a year ago well uh, nearly a year maybe nine months ago um i was approached by adam Mm. uh who said we're looking to do more podcast stuff um, we'd love to to get you involved. Mm-hmm. Yours was one of the first names that came to mind, which is always really flattering because mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of what they do. Mm-hmm. And 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 as with as with a lot of things that I end up working uh, working for, turning my hand to, like with North, like mm-hmm. I was a fan of what Cultaholic did mm-hmm. beforehand, before they'd even approached me. Like I'm like I enjoy the product they put out, mm-hmm. and so for them to approach me and say we want you to work on a podcast with this, it's amazing. And I get to work with one of the and I hope you won't mind me saying it, like one of the real unsung heroes of Cultaholic, mm-hmm. which is a guy called Justin Henry. Okay. And Justin Henry, you, we watch the lists, the video lists they put out. We read a lot of the articles. Justin Henry is one of the one of the guys that, that mainly turns. They all do. They all write for the for the website. They all write for videos. But Justin Henry does a lot of the writing as well, mm-hmm. and he doesn't get enough of the love. In fact, we had a. I, I saw a, quite a funny back and forth on twitter uh, about cultaholic and somebody tweeted him saying oh are you a fan of cultaholic then and he went <laughs> i work for them <laughs> but because he's not front of house like jack the jobber and adam pachiti is that people forget that so so i said look this is us kind of getting front of house yeah so uh, justin was keen to do a podcast but it was finding somebody uh, to do it with uh, matthew was his first pick not that i'm bitter <laughs> Uh, it's fine. I'm, I didn't want to be a first pick anyway. Um, so I was I was a B team for the B team, oh. uh, which I'm proud of. So so we do um, we do a classic Raw review. So we've we from episode one of Raw until presumably the end of time, 
we're going to watch every episode of Monday Night Raw and mm. and just and critique each episode as it goes along. Mm-hmm. And when pay per views come along, we do like an alternative commentary track for them. Mm-hmm. We get a special guest in and we do a commentary track for it. Mm-hmm. And I'm having the most fun working with <laughs> Justin. Um, we are we're 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 both ve- we're very we're very similar yet also very different cats. And I think that plays to our advantage. Justin is very much. Um, he's more he is more sensible the more sensible minded one like he will come with with bevies of notes and it'll be intricate details about everything and and i'm glad that he does because i turn up with about 10 gags written on a on a, on my notes in my phone <laughs> and 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 we just spar off each other for an hour and uh it's 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 some of the most it's some of the most fun i've had doing wrestling stuff for a long time so i'm yeah. very grateful that cultaholic brought me in i'm very grateful that not just a podcast partner but i've gained a friend in justin as well Mm -hmm. like we've both been through some some slightly naff times as of late and we've kind of we've been there to chat to each other over stuff Mm. and it's it's been really fun we had a we we nearly had a falling out we nearly had a falling out um back in december (laughs) because i mentioned because and because i'm a bit of a bullshit artist in the sense that i just i tend just to talk a lot of nonsense i'd said to him i'm in disneyland next week mate can't do it (laughs) and he went okay and i even mentioned it in the show i'm not here next week because i'm in disneyland i was legitimately going to be in disneyland yeah so then so then as me and me and alex my good lady as we're getting out the lift uh, to go for for dinner in disneyland paris message from justin saying ready when you are i'm like mate i'm in disneyland <laughs> like seriously though. Like, i thought you were joking I said no mate like took a picture <laughs> i'm in disneyland <laughs> and he said i've moved around like so much work to make time to record this tonight i was like mate i'm really sorry oh. i i didn't think to to check that you if i was if you thought i was being serious or not like oh. i was genuinely in disneyland and I've told him I've done this, so it's fine. <laughs> so he's met. He was messaging me a couple of times. So I just went onto Messenger and I went mute. <laughs> Fair enough. Airplane mode. And I was like, <sighs> and I told Alex what happened. I said, I'm just, I'm gonna let him be a bit hot with me mm. for about seven hours, <laughs> and then I'll touch base with him. In a, I'll touch base with him then. Yeah. And 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 we're all fine. Like it was oh, all fine. Right. I think on that moment because he was very tired and very cranky, he was hot with me. And you know what? Rightly so. We should. I think we've since agreed that we'll fill out holiday forms <laughs> <laughs> to go down official channels yeah. for when one of us is there. <sighs> but I'm very blessed that I've gained a wonderful friend in Justin mm. in, in in doing something like this. And then mm. here's to many many more weeks. And and the sad thing is that the longer we do it. The inevitable is happening because we're watching the early days of Monday Night Raw. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? Oh, do you know what a treat it is yeah. to watch an episode of Monday Night Raw that is forty-three minutes long? <sighs> Isn't it weird that wrestling porn has now basically become a wrestling show that's under an hour? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, it's so amazing. Nice. And we know that the longer we do it, the shows are going to get longer. And and mm. in the year twenty fifty-eight, when you know one of my eyes has fallen out and. I mean, and Justin's in a wheelchair somewhere. We're going to be talking about this 27-hour episode of Raw, oh. which features nine Seth Rollins matches. <laughs> oh, God. That's well. this, but, yeah, so so that's exciting. If you follow Cult, if you go to the Cultaholic podcast, mm-hmm. it's on It's on everything, mm-hmm. I presume. And me and Justin pop up on a Wednesday night. We've got a new episode dropping tonight. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's such a fun time to talk about wrestling in that era because it's, like, it's post-Hulkamania, mm-hmm. pre-new generation right now, the mm-hmm. where we're at. So it's like we've had the we've had the push of Lex Luger come and go <laughs> in short form, and um, we we have the debut vignette of Ludwig Borger on this week's show, oh. and genuinely, as we were talking about it, I was laughing so hard I gave myself a headache. <laughs> so please have that to look forward to. It's I think by the time this is dropped, that would have dropped as well. Mm. Um, I laugh so hard during that I give I give myself a headache. <laughs> It is unreal. Oh, I, I love stuff like that though. When you just you can just go back at and look at it, there's, there's so many wrestling things you can go back at. Yeah. One of my favorite ones is Nitro. I, oh I, I wow! Lo- I love going back and lo- looking at some of the crap Nitro stuff that happens. Did you see that thing? That it did the rounds on Twitter last week. It was it was a Bam Bam Bigelow versus Rey Mysterio. It was on Nitro, but it was just at the cusp of the hour changing. Yeah. So like. 
they're wrestling for a minute and then suddenly it's the top of the hour. The Nitro theme music starts. So you think, oh, we're going to an ad break. Mm-hmm. Tony Schiavone's there going, well, it's the third hour of Monday Nitro and the fireworks are going <laughs> off on the stage and the pyro's going off in the ring and Bam Bam Bigelow is stood there mid-match <laughs> just looking round. Waiting for the pyre because because they were so they had to be so on the button to make sure that people switching channels mm-hmm. saw flashy fireworks mm-hmm. that they had to hit them dead on that time <sighs> dead on the hour. But you just got Bam Bam Bigelow in the ring whilst all these fireworks are going off whilst the Nitro theme music's playing. <laughs> it's it is something special. I oh. did the rounds this week. I, I wish I could say which episode Nitro it's from. I can't. But oh my gosh, it was oh. beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Speaking of stuff that's done the rounds this week on Twitter, my my new favorite GIF of Stone Cold, with uh, stunning Riza Ramon out of the atmosphere and back again. Oh yeah, Dick Tubbs from Cultaholic. Yeah, Get in lad. Hey, what an absolute boy. I got Stone Cold to retweet it too. <laughs> I don't think he. I don't even think Stone Cold. Uh, he asked him to. I think Stone Cold just saw it, yeah. and that's when it's powerful. Yeah. When when when. You know something's on the rounds when the actual person who isn't tagged in it sees it and then shares it, and it gets it just takes on a life of its own from there. And I, I like how he's just. Uh, I think Kevin Owens retweeted it too stone cold, and then just said, "You know, you're gonna have to teach me how to st- how to stun up people to the moon and back." <laughs> <laughs> why? Why is Kevin Owens doing the stunner? I mean, he used to do the springboard stunner, so it was like a backward springboard stunner. The one that John row. Cena. Yeah, he Got stole from John Cena. Yes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was just curious. I just when I saw him do it, I was like, "Oh, okay, that's that's fine." I, I mean, think it's just because power bomb seems all right. I mean, I think it's just because it's an easier bump than the power bomb too. Yeah, so it might be that. It looks a bit weird, Kevin Owens doing it, and I love Kevin Owens. I like how he's came back with his new tattoos and everything, and he look he looks great. Are well. we meant to cheer him or boo him? I think cheer. I yeah. think he's meant to be fierce. So. I'm not too sure. See, it's. It, I think what's going to end up happening, and I saw a really good theory about this, is Kevin Owens is going to come back and it's going to be a whole thing of Vince McMahon running himself crazy. Yeah. And getting every, all the fans to hate him and then Stephanie, uh, Shane and Triple H end up going like, no, you're out of here. You know, you're not allowed to do anything anymore, but he'll just do backstage shit. I think I've, it's art imitating life at the moment because you've got Vince McMahon just walking out on, on TV going, no, I don't want to do that. I'm doing this instead. Yeah, that's literally all it is. And so I but think... he has previous doing this. And I was, yeah. th- and the other day I was thinking about this. I was thinking, like him just going, right, Kofi's not in the match. Kevin Owens is. Mm-hmm. He did this in 02 when it, the main event of Backlash was going to be Triple H and Undertaker. Mm-hmm. And he just turned up on sort of SmackDown and went, I know what the people want better than they do. So mm-hmm. therefore, the main event of Backlash is going to be Triple H versus Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, that's nice. So he's got previous. Yeah. But it's it it, it 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 it's a it's an absolute work for it because you know obviously he knows that the fans don't like what he does so he's just barking at it more to get more heat so it makes more sense to me. Personally. Do you know what I love at the moment? What's that? Daniel Bryan's belt. Oh, I do as well. It's a nice environmentally friendly belt that I'm excited they'll one day mass produce. Uh, uh, I I I do eventually <laughs> hope that if you burn it, a lot of people just end up getting really high. <laughs> that should be. <laughs> oh, see, it lends itself to a feud with Rob Van Dam. Yeah. Where Rob Van Dam's backstage just smoking the belt. <laughs> Him and Jerry Lynn as well. <laughs> Jerry Lynn, Daniel Bryan versus <laughs> Rob Van Dam. Jerry Lynn, I forgot Jerry Lynn was a thing. Yeah, Jerry Lynn. Oh, bless him. Oh, God. What's he doing these days? Um, I, I kind of, I think he's uh, an instructor. Okay, I okay, as long as he's doing all right. No, I only discovered this week that Mike Quackenbush is working, does some work at the Performance Center. Yeah, as a yeah. trainer. Yes, because obviously uh, he done with Chikara for a long, long time. I love Mike Quackenbush. And Mike Quackenbush is amazing. He does a pod. He has a podcast uh, called Kayfabe 2.0, mm. which is sort of like sort of TED talks with Mike Quackenbush mm. based on wrestling. What a mind! Yeah, what an amazing wrestling mind Mike Quackenbush is. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, like we talk about like. Uh, wrestlers and where they are today uh an interesting one i got uh, a couple of years ago val venus owns his own weed shop in california there's daniel bryan pub there <laughs> i think Have he's this. just just daniel bryan with glasses on just like a really bad fake mustache over the top I just of it i want to pawn this off to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah val venus uh has his own weed factory or something godfather owns his own strip club Excellent. of course uh in which i think d'lo brown works there Oh god! <laughs> on the bar? No, no, I think. I'm oh, not in the toilets with all the <laughs> fragrances. Hey, you're gonna, get, you're gonna get lucky tonight. Shaking his head as he's putting aftershave on you. 
I, th- I would like to think if he's a bouncer, he splashes across. Do you people. know what? As a bouncer, he'd be sensational. He would be. I'd love him as a bouncer. Oh, you're that'd so be good. great. Like just, just you know, because he come at you, he do the head wobble, <laughs> sky eye you through the. I like to think that when Mark Hen- Mark Henry retires from WWE, he's going to work there, and then it's just <laughs> we end up getting a nation of domination kind of thing going on just <laughs> at Godfather's nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> the, a nation of domination reunion at a strip club that is very attitude era <laughs> it would be if it was BDSM it would be the nation of dominatrix <laughs> good night everybody <laughs> we're done and on that note <laughs> mic drop oh, I can't they're on an arm <laughs> shit <laughs> it does have the same effect doesn't no. it no so but yeah, uh, fucking hell. <laughs> We've got on our old time. I don't know where we went with it. I don't know what happened. Uh, um, so we talked about um, watching old episodes of Night Yes. Obviously we plugged the old Cultaholic thing. Yeah. Uh, we've plugged uh, MEW. Mm. What else do you want to chat about, mate? Um, I'm here for a bit. I'll tell you what. I mean, no right? mad rush. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what. <laughs> this right? isn't going to be like Alex Jones where we talk for four oh, hours about no. how the water's turning the frogs gay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's how Vince McMahon's ruining have, wrestling. Have you watched the Alex Jones, I Joe have. Rogan part? Wow, what a tour de force. Oh. What a tour de force. It's, what the f- I love it. Going redder and redder. And every time he was told, I think you're wrong that, that <sighs> aliens invaded the like, aliens invaded the brains of the Nazis. Yeah. No, it's what I read! <laughs> it's what I read! <laughs> I knew a five-star oh. general! <laughs> My God, oh God. Every, oh. Literally, I, could, I had to sit down for about half, uh, about half an hour in and just, just take stock. I got a t- It oh, was yeah. just relentless. I got a two hours, five minutes. And I went, I need to take up smoking. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I need a minute. Like, I, I, just, I, I, had, I had to go watch like memes for about half an hour and then come back and just be like, okay, I'm ready for the rest of it. And then Eddie Bravo turned up and just, oh. Uh, Look, nah, nah. Is it it's the Joe Rogan experience? Yeah, Joe so, Rogan experience. Joe Rogan experience featuring Alex Jones. Uh, it is a, because Alex Jones has been, because of through Info Wars and stuff, they've been, they've had a lot of their, uh, media outlets cut off. Mm-hmm. He was invited on the Joe Rogan experience, and boy, did he take full advantage. Oh yeah, four hours long, like in in an era where everything needs to be narrowed down to a gif for us mm-hmm. to stay stay attentive. Mm-hmm. A four hour podcast is uh, is is quite a shock. I don't even think I could do that. Like it's, uh, I'd struggle. Which I'd would really... you rather? Right, come on then. Front row of <laughs> WrestleMania with no loo break, oh. or four hours of Alex Jones but you could obviously with that you can take the phone to the toilet and keep on watching mm. what like Alex Jones in the studio yeah oh if I had Alex Jones in the studio um, oh I don't know oh oh that's because I... Wrestlemania used to be a really appealing idea for me but now I've realised that it would be a quarter of a day well of my life to sit I, and watch it I'm kind of I've kind of went off the idea of going to Wrestlemania now Mm. I am more for the idea of going to Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, I really want to go to Wrestle Kingdom. That's that's a massive one for me, and I really want to go to uh, London when they come down for New uh, for New Japan in August. Oh, and that's quite tempting. Yeah, and that feels like a, that feels like a more palpable show. Like yeah. I don't know whether I don't know whether it's because as wrestling fans we are overtired now mm. or i don't know whether it's something because now i'm in i'm i'm in my mid 30s this year mm. so i'm 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 on the downward slope to 40 mm. and i don't know whether it's just i'm getting tired like just mm. generally tired because the i i got so excited when the last the last time that we had a north show mm. that was on a sunday right i can't tell you how happy i was <laughs> <laughs> to to see like the start time was like four o'clock in the afternoon. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and like we be and I was like, so I can do the show, I can go for a drink after, and I can be home by nine. <laughs> this is the best day of my life. I was uh, like, yeah, this is like incredible. I'm 26 this year, and I was just like, you know, I like because I've stopped drinking at wrestling shows now because I just can't do it. I just can't. I, I drank was, during WrestleMania and I made myself. Ne- I fell into a coma nearly. Like if if I like I I would drink at WrestleMania. I'll drink if I'm watching a pay per view at home or something like that. But if I'm going to a show, I'll just I'll just not. I, How I come? I just can't. I just can't do it anymore. I just feel like I'm because I don't know. Do, what you, I, do you, when you when you get um, um drink responsibly when yeah. you get drunk, mm-hmm. what kind of drunk are you? Because oh. there's a study that says that whatever drunk you are, that is your fundamental. 
Oh, I'm the character. Hey, You're happy hey. drunk. Yeah, I'm happy drunk. That's but then, right. then I fall over and sick up on my shoes, <laughs> which I one time. Could you not just have like a couple? Or uh, is it once you're there, you're there? I don't like to now because it's if, it's a case of if I'm at a wrestling show, I'm usually there as press, mm, and I, I, get it. I have the sense of professional ability, a, a professional like custody now, and yeah. just being like, well, if I'm there as press, I shouldn't be doing anything like this. And I kind of got that sense when I went down to WrestleGate, and uh, sorry, I'm speaking about WrestleGate again. Why? Why are you um, sorry? Um, because I went down. Why are you sorry? To speak about WrestleGate. Just because I feel like I mention it all the time. No, mate, don't. I don't, um, mate. I, 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 Every chance I get in, in the company of a of a wonderful wrestling fan like yourself, mm. I mention that me and Jimmy Havoc are mates. <laughs> well, uh, when I and Kelly Klein, the gatekeeper from Women of Honor, follow me oh, on Twitter, and nice. we talk all the time. <laughs> like I haven't told my misses that she'd be furious. <laughs> Hi, Kelly Klein, the gatekeeper. <laughs> um, but yeah, when I went out to WrestleGate, it was kind of affluence to me then, of uh, me and uh, the head editor Luke. Who's uh who went down? We both went down in our official hoodies. This is business. This is what we're going down to do. We're gonna go get loads of content. It's gonna be amazing. And then I went down and there was other wrestling press people there who were all getting smashed. Didn't want to get interviews afterwards and posted stuff on social media and then that was it. And I'm like, I don't see the point. I do. Some people are in that kind of game for free tickets. Yeah. And and that's what you experience there. Unfortunately, yeah. because anybody and everybody can now start up a podcast, you don't yeah. need any journalistic integrity to do so. Mm-hmm. And and for some people, that's not an issue because people like yourselves mm-hmm. conduct yourselves in the right manner. Mm-hmm. But there are some where it's just like, I do a podcast, can I come along? And they, like you say, they treat it as, I've got free tickets to an event. Way. And there's, but there there comes a level, and because if you want repeat, um, repeat work with these guys, mm-hmm. then you have to treat it with with an element of respect and mm-hmm. and, 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 and and like you say, professionalism. Yeah, I mean, it's we've been openly invited to go back now to pretty much any show because you turned up, so, you you didn't get smashed, mm-hmm. you reported the show well, and you plugged the show through your channels appropriately. Exactly. Of course, you've been welcome. Back. So it's I don't know, it's just I I just feel like. The, the people that obviously we're going to get back to the trolls thing that that if they do start their own content oh well I've got my own podcast I talk about this but then they don't pre- conduct themselves to the right amount of professionalism to get to the right height of a cultaholic of a what yeah. culture so they can bitch and complain all they want they're, it's their own downfall and it comes back to what we said at the start about about uh, professional wrestlers and success mm-hmm. it's you have to have a really strong social media game yes you have to you can't half arse it mm-hmm. you can't like I think some of the best not just wrestlers but the best brands on Twitter mm-hmm. aren't brands that just constantly say come by this come by that mm-hmm. come to this event they're not all calls to action mm-hmm. sometimes they're just silly things right mm-hmm. I follow Greg's on Twitter and they follow me back <laughs> right me and Greg's are good friends yeah. I like to call myself a Greg sponsored athlete nice um, <laughs> and, and and if you follow their Twitter like they're constantly having they're, they're constantly making memes that are Greg's related and they're really funny and they're on point mm-hmm. and they follow trends Mm -hmm. and they're not just constantly going come to our shop now and buy a vegan sausage roll they don't need to do that Mm -hmm. because if you live in the northeast there's a greg's every five feet you don't need to come now and do this Mm -hmm. the vegan sausage roll uh, gave greg's a something like 200 percent spike in business in the first quarter of this year and nowhere on their thing does it say does it does it blatantly fragrantly flagrantly say Come buy a vegan sausage roll. Mm. They've because they just got wrapped up in the hype and the, the mm. and the Twitter went crazy for it and they just rolled with it. Pun intended. They just rolled with it. I'm currently wearing Greg socks. <laughs> yes, as well. Jesus Christ. I am wearing these were a gift from Greg's. Oh, because uh, I've been known to talk about them on my radio show a couple of times and they listen. Uh, so, uh, hence why I'm a Greg sponsored athlete. That's genuinely mint. And, I love that. And they know the power. They because and they know that I'm a I'm a, a bit of a bit of a ch- chatterbox on Twitter. Mm-hmm. They know that if I'm they're going to send me them, I put it on Twitter on the way here today. Yeah. I'm going to take a picture that I was bad boys, <laughs> and and I'm going to get the word out about Greg. And I so therefore I that tweet that I sent has made will have made at least one person go, oh, I fancy a Greg's today. Yeah. I've done. Done. That's it. Done. That's, that's it. And and that's and the best brands do that. And and you see a lot of wrestlers who all they do is go, I'm wrestling here, I'm wrestling here. But also you see a lot of wrestlers who are like 
Little Miss Roxy, who I, I think has um, one of the best Twitter games mm-hmm. in British wrestling. Because she will make content, she will she will make gifts that are related to her and her brand. Yeah. But they'll be reflective of stuff from the news, stuff that day, general topical stuff. You'll see it, mm-hmm. and she's really clever with it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Rory Coyle is I- incredible with merch and online, and the videos that he makes mm-hmm. have have elevated his brand. Yeah. Because they are so good. Yeah. He's found a niche that he fits perfectly in. Mm-hmm. And that is why so many people want to work with him. Because they know when you get... You don't just get a Rory Coil match. Mm-hmm. You get a Rory Coil build-up. You mm-hmm. get Rory Coil videos. You get Rory Coil presence. It's not just about the wrestling match. If, if anything, in some cases, almost the end product is secondary to everything around it. Like, mm-hmm. with you guys, when you went to WrestleGate, mm-hmm. like... As long as you, like, you you may not have made a load of notes on the night, but as long as you presented them properly on Twitter, Mm -hmm. it's okay. There might be 12 spelling mistakes in your write-up. It doesn't matter (laughs) because all people have seen is lots of love between WrestleGate and Rope Break. Yeah. And that's a big part of it. Well, I mean, they're doing doing amazing things at the minute. uh, They're doing a, a series about WrestleGate called uh, 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 Open the Gate or something. It's something yes, along those lines. and uh, they've got the chap involved Dale in the Joseph. Progress mm-hmm. documentary, is it? Brilliant guy, yeah. Dale Joseph, he's uh, fantastic with Elixir Media. and Ridiculously he, he, talented He's guy. such a talented guy, he, he really is. I ended up playing ping pong with him when I got really <laughs> drunk. Uh, That's amazing. He smashed me in beer pong. Uh, he, uh, yeah, so Dale Joseph, amazing videographer brilliant at beer pong that is incredible uh yeah no one else will have that story no no it, and uh, oh, it, it was uh, we ended up, i think we ended up drinking tequila <laughs> oh god it, it was a, it's always it always ends badly when the spirits start coming out it always ends a bit badly um so uh, here's a, a quick question for you B- B- i think we should wrap it up after after this question okay. we're, we're on an hour now so um would you what advice would you give to either myself on rope break and our, our, our us guys or anyone else that would be starting up like a social media campaign around the wrestling community um i'm gonna steal a line from a radio hero of mine mm-hmm. um because we've not talked much about radio uh, mm-hmm. we talked a lot about wrestling um but my two passions in life have always been radio and wrestling mm-hmm. so the fact that i get to do both as work is unreal mm-hmm. um and I want to steal a line from an American guy called Jojo Kincaid, mm-hmm. who was asked this same question to people who want to get into radio. And I say it to anybody who wants to do like what you have done mm-hmm. um, and, and make a brand, build a podcast. Um, the advice is don't do it unless you burn an ache to do it, to be, to, 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 conduct yourself and to put yourself out there to do this job do not do it unless every part of you bubbles away to do it because you are going to need that energy and that strength and that love not just to survive but to thrive Mm -hmm. if this is what you want to do if this is the passion that you have then that passion will see you good Mm -hmm. if you if you want to do it and you have the vision to do it if you're in it for free tickets it's going to fall by the wayside yeah dead quick but if this is what you want to do then your passion will carry you through Mm -hmm. and you will make it through and you will push through and i'm excited to see this thing happen you guys is a great example of that of guys who have a passion for it and you are pushing it and and you continue to do so Mm -hmm. and never stop oh no never stop always learn always adapt always improve find your niche find what you do and just keep doing it Mm -hmm. i mean it's it's the the point i've always just tried to get across to people is we fucking love British wrestling. Absolutely. We fucking love it, honestly. And I don't think there's any... All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and not blow me on trumpet too much. But I don't think there's anyone that promotes stuff like we do. If you're, you, You've got to do it in a way that is unique, because mm. that is what will, mm. what will help you survive and help you thrive. If you're doing it in a way that nobody else is doing it... Mm. And then, and and not just like, oh, you can do lists, you can do videos based on did you knows and stuff like that. But you mm-hmm. do it in your own way. You mm-hmm. find your own, you find your own style, and you find your own feeling to it, and that's mm-hmm. what gets you through. Mm-hmm. And if you love what you do, then it will come through, and more people will find it. Mm-hmm. That's 
that's how I've been with everything. I've just been a hundred percent passionate about everything I want to do, mm-hmm. and every single day is day one. Mm-hmm. And if it, if it doesn't quite work out, hey, we'll do it again. We'll yeah. try it again. Mm-hmm. If it takes longer than expected, you just keep going. Mm-hmm. And and you know, if you have that passion and that desire to to succeed in whatever you want to do, then then you can do it. And mm-hmm. that's with anything in life. Mm-hmm. It's a bit deep. I it's know. true. But it's true. Like I, everything I've. Everything I've I've been very I've been very blessed that everything I want to do in life I've been able to do it mm-hmm. and I've pushed through to do it and it takes sometimes it takes a while mm-hmm. sometimes you you got to eat super noodles from a kettle in a hotel in Shrewsbury <laughs> for for four months to do it that's the real thing um, <laughs> some sometimes you just got it but sometimes you, if you want it you do it mm. you know and and I wish you luck and I wish any anybody else on a journey like that. Mm-hmm going forward i wish you luck with it and i wish you love light and peace with it and tweet me at tom campbell we'll, we'll, we'll riff on it hell yeah i'll do i'll do we'll, that all we'll riff on it tom is there anything you want to talk about yes phil <laughs> <laughs> uh if i can just very quickly plug uh my own twitter at tom campbell that'd be nice thanks very much uh at north ncl north wrestling i'm commentator and ring announcer for one of the most wonderful group of people in the northeast it is a cult um, thank you, Andrew Bowers, for letting me come and play. Uh, at MEW, uh, ME Wrestling UK on Twitter. That's Main Event Wrestling. March 22nd, Industry Long Benton. Uh, I'm in the corner of my boy Mickey the Dragon taking on Shreddy Brett. Come see us at Rise underscore England. I have not talked about Rise in this interview and I feel terrible for it. If you love Deathmatch Wrestling, the Games of Death, March 23rd at the Brunel Social Club in Leeds. We have guys coming over from America to smash light tubes over guys from Borough. What more do you need? <laughs> <laughs> Come be a part of Rise. It is one of the more, it is one of the the more aggressive, brutal, but incredibly fun wrestling products out there as well. Um, um, at three CW, uh, three count wrestling on Twitter, as they are at three count wrestling on Twitter. Um, all being well, new dates announced soon, but an incredible back catalogue of stuff. Uh, should you want to get involved with 3CW On Demand, uh, I do recommend seeking out Justin the Hammer Sysum versus Keith Lee from our show in Middlesbrough last year. Ho, oh, Daddy! Oh. That is some good beans, <laughs> as they say. Um, anything else that I've not plugged at Cultaholic? Thank you very much, guys. It's an honour and a privilege. Uh, and uh, I think that's all my things. If I've forgotten anything, then just shout me up in Twitter and I'll and I'll apologise profusely. And it's been an honour and a privilege to be here. It's been an absolute beauty to have <laughs> you in, honestly. We talked a lot of nonsense, didn't we? We talked we talk, <laughs> that's, that's what this is about, you know? We, we don't have any scripts. We don't have any exact questions. And it, it just feels better to uh, go back and forth and just see what happens. It's always the easiest way to go about. But thank you very much for listening, everyone. I have been Phil. This has been Rope Break. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and send comments down below. And maybe, maybe, if you ask us some questions about stuff, or if what what do you want? What more content do you want from us? Do you want top tens? Do you want to know who's shit, who's not? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe something like that. Do you want me to do eating challenges? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Shall I? I'll eat a kebab Can faster you? than the bulk. Oh, oh yeah. A face bulk in a Parmo challenge. Oh, God. That's what happened in Rise oh, of the Week. Yeah, I know. Oh, oh, wow. But thank you very much for listening. I've got Have a slogan a good... for you. Go on. Stop the count. <laughs> this is the rope break. <laughs>